Hello guys, I'm back. Uh, it's kind of a another video uh, on helping Art a little bit. Uh, last night we uh, kind of worked over together on doing some troubleshooting. I'll kind of go over real quickly what I had him doing. Uh, one of the primary things really was more than anything. Did some voltage checks and found out that right in this area here, this is 105 volts, 105 volts, 105 volts. These are the screen voltages to the front end tubes. They were off, they were low. Uh, these two, the 6U7s, it's not highly critical, but the 6K8 to operate properly really wants to see 100 volts here or more, but at least 100. They were running around 90. So we did some other checking. Uh, ended up finding out on the ABC line we really didn't have much voltage at all there and there should have been at least some uh, these tubes are both cat uh, all three tubes are cathode bias as well as picking up voltage from the ABC circuit and in both cases the grid voltages were way low and what I mean by low, they should be somewhere around at least, uh, at least somewhere around negative three volts on the grids, and they were running ground like pretty much zero point negative point oh one somewhere in that area. Uh, they were very very low. So I decided to have him go ahead and introduce his own negative voltage, we'll take a couple AA batteries or something and connect them together in series to get three volts uh, and then just connect them into the ABC line. I said just basically at, at this junction these two two megs come together and hook right together with the 270K that's actually inside the can the wire comes out makes a connection between these two you actually have a double ABC line here mainly because of the 6K8 and we have an RF amp so we're feeding one ABC to these two tubes and the other one is feeding this tube uh, in any case plugged it in there and we started getting some negative voltage on the grids and what they ended up doing was allowing a signal to pass you hooked into the antenna uh, right here allowed a signal to be seen on each one of these grids and we actually was able to get a signal clear to this point but when you checked at the diode uh, had no signal we came back to the plate had a signal that was way it was there but it was v badly distorted and now he's going to do a video on this today and show it so I'm just kind of reiterating real quickly what what was discovered but in my conversations with him I discussed one thing and that was to BNC painted the chassis both top and bottom and to a certain extent I should apologize to him because I let that one slide and I shouldn't have I told him I should have told him not to paint the bottom or at least not the entire bottom but he did and uh, when he asked me I just said yeah that that'd be fine as long as you can pick up ground somewhere without thinking I, I wasn't thinking so that's really my fault the big problem that he's running into and he found out that by just simply moving the chassis the signal changed he was following it with a scope and it changed just just bumping the chassis so flexing it changed things and that really determines the fact that there are some grounding issues 
this can right here, the second IF, the output IF as they're normally known. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in on that. Uh, okay. These parts right here with the little stars are all inside the can. And he had made a video about this and talked about it and everything. In fact, I actually had a question for him because it was only showing four wires coming out of the can. Normally when you got all these components in there, you'll have five wires coming out. One will be a ground. Well, it turned out that this ground right here, and that's what this black line is, is ground. It goes and eventually goes down off the uh, thing here to ground right here. But everything here is grounded. So this ground point, and I, I don't have a can like his, but there was an actual strap that goes underneath underneath this screw. He, he shows the video of it and you can see it, but it came up through the ceramic and then where the center screw is, it went, it wrapped around that. It had an eyelet that fit down over so that when you put the, the IF transformer back into your shielding can and tighten this down, it grounded the shield. Now under normal circumstances, these set right on top of the chassis so they're making contact here but they're also making contact at these nuts and they'll generally have lock washers in here and when this is all tightened down it makes good solid contact uh, consequently allowing the shield to ground with the chassis painted bo bottom and top my suspect, suspicion is, is this is not really getting a good connection to the chassis and by that happening it causes a couple little problems. One, this capacitor and this resistor right here makes up the filter, the smoothing filter like I've talked before. Uh, basically the same type of filter as you would have in your power supply, your electrolytics and, and uh, either resistor or field coil. Well, this is the filtering circuit. The other thing too is, through this capacitor's return path for the diode circuit, you have your diode here and the cathode. That makes up the diode part. And you have your current flow, electrons leave from the cathode to the plate, comes down, goes through the, the tuned coil, back through, comes down through this path here, through this capacitor, back to the ground point, which is connected directly to the cathode. <coughs> Excuse me. Without that ground, or it not really making good contact, you lose your diode. So you're not detecting anymore, you're not rectifying the signal. That's number one problem, which means now you're not going to get no signal through. The second problem is it leaves this coil somewhat open, open-ended. Now it does go through various numerous resistors. Um, this ground is, I believe, actually the same point here, so this is not grounded. But we do go through the two 2.2 megs, making it back through. Uh, down here at the 0.05 AVC filter cap there's a few other caps and stuff throughout this AVC line that it can go through but what this ends up doing is causing this to operate probably on various different harmonics showing up in it it's not operating properly and when we I won't go deep into anything about how IF transformers work. Uh, I'm going to do a video on that, but the deepest part will be on the transformer videos. But in any case, there is a what they call a reflection back upstream on a transformer. So what's going on here can be reflected back here and this 
would have a lot of distortion, harmonics and everything, which would cause a problem in here, which would show up in this, and that's why his signal looked terrible here. Now he could do a little adjustment and try to clean it up a little bit, but it was still bad. So basically, uh, this video is for two things. One, to apologize for not really thinking about this and telling him not to at least not paint those areas where anything and everything uh, fastens the ground. Your tube sockets, if any of those have connections to ground, uh, terminal strips uh, where they mount, a lot of times that lug is used for ground. That, where they mount to the chassis needs to have a good connection. Uh, any capacitors, any any trimmer caps or anything, sometimes how they're mounted, they're mounted directly to the chassis or, or through a bracket that actually makes one side of that capacitor trimmer, patter cap, and makes ground. Uh, if you have a coil assembly like this radio does, uh, a lot of the frame will have uh, the connections for ground ends of the coils and that is bolted down so any of these points need to be clean of any paint or any corrosion or rust uh, the biggest thing that a person can do if you got what you feel is a, a, a chassis that you had to really clean up badly on the underside there's a lot of rust uh, you get it cleaned up the worst raw areas, especially where there's no electrical connections, ground connections, or anything, you can go ahead and, and shoot some paint on it. The areas that have to have terminal strips mounted, sockets mounted, uh, IF cans mounted, at least underneath, you can paint the top of the chassis. They will make ground contact through these nuts, as long as you've got a good lock washer on there to really clamp them down but any of those points need to stay clean lack of paint now you can spray paint the whole thing by just simply putting tape or something to mask off those points if you want and if you're really concerned about ground or about a corrosion issue after you get the radio working you get everything hooked on everything's working these are tightened down good and tight. You can come back with a, a brush and paint them a little bit, you know, if you really want to. But really, for all practical purposes, the metal should not give you any troubles as long as it stays in a, a controlled environment, you know, in a home where you got, you know, heat and air conditioning, all this stuff. If someone's going to store the radio again in a damp basement or out in a uh, shed or something like that then yeah it may start corroding again but again I reiterate I did was not thinking and I should have said something about not painting those areas and I didn't so anyway to all of you out there be careful about your grounds uh, you know, it, it's best to try to go back to the way the factory did it, for one thing. But always make sure you've got good ground contacts to everything that's shielded, to those shields. Good ground contacts to all your terminal strips, to brackets that may be providing ground to whatever hooks on that bracket, and so on. Because if you don't, it can throw off all kinds of problems. You can have problems with even including your power supply not working quite right. It can even float up high in voltage if the electrolytics on the filters are not really grounding good. So you can really throw everything off on the radio and get it where it just either flat refuses to operate or have intermittence and stuff. So. I just wanted to go over this. I'm not trying to take away from Art's video. It's going to be a good video. He's going to go over what we discussed and I'm hoping that he'll show some of the signals on the scope because uh, I asked him to because I wanted to see a little bit about what's going on here and see what it looks like but my suspicions are 
especially after he bumped and moved the the chassis by flexing simply flexing the chassis the signal changed so that's saying that most likely we're not getting con con continuity at that ground and stuff so anyway uh, what turned out should have been a short video is turning out long so I'm gonna jump off of here um, and probably make another video I want to discuss a little bit about IF transformers and, and, and a very basic detail of how they work what they're doing uh, like I say it's not going to be math oriented it's not going to be anything like that it's going to be more just general theory and um, when, when we get to that point of tuned transformers in our transformer discussions which I'll be getting them videos more of those videos up on that uh, just give me some time or patience please uh, but I will be getting them up soon hopefully and uh, we'll we'll discuss I have transformers in a lot more detail as far as uh, how they're designed and, and uh, some more in-depth stuff what to look for in them so until the next video which I'll probably record one here next for the IF transformers I'll see you on the next one and thanks for watching